This evening, we continue our series on the rise of artificial intelligence by examining how AI is helping people cope with the death of their loved ones. And the solution is raising some serious ethical questions. Here's correspondent Mark Meredith. Instead of saying goodbye forever, artificial intelligence lets people live on virtually. To create the digital twin of real person to AI avatar, we usually shoot uh, three, three hours. Michael Jung is CFO of California-based Deep Brain AI. For roughly $10,000, the company records a person's voice, face, mannerisms, and asks them questions to help a computer later generate personal responses even after they're deceased. The technology can provoke strong emotional reactions, but creators say that's the point. In 2020, a South Korean documentary crew captured the heartbreaking moment when a mother reunited with her deceased seven-year-old daughter through AI. While she couldn't physically touch her daughter, the moment is chilling. Psychiatrists telling Fox technology like this can also create problems. The potential for it to come up with sort of wildly inappropriate or wildly inaccurate behaviors, comments, images even, uh, is right now, I think, quite high. And that could be extremely disturbing. Experts believe while the tech is improving rapidly, it could also backfire. One philosophy professor writing in 2021 that AI grief means it will be more difficult for people to arrive at some form of closure. The Portland Institute for Loss and Transition recently did a study on how people mourn with chatbots. It found that people who use the AI saw a boost in self-confidence after using the tech in the grieving process. But, Brett, researchers admit this is so new. It's a complex issue, and they believe further study is needed. But this is certainly where the future is heading. Brett. Mark, great job with this series all week long, and I know it's not the end of this. <laughs> no, uh, it's thanks. not. Yeah,